In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather on this, the fourth Sunday of Lent, we gather to rejoice, that is, the Laetare Sunday, to rejoice in that brightness of light that comes breaking into our darkness. We find ourselves at this halfway point of the season of Lent as we've endured the, the darkness of our sin and the repentance thereof. We come to see the bright light of Christ and our redemption in Him shining just beyond the horizon, as it were. And so, dear brothers and sisters, as we are ever more aware of the coming of the Lord, as we are ever more aware of our life in Him, let us turn towards the Lord with confidence and hope. Let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. <coughs> Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings and scoffed at his prophets until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem and set all its places afire. <coughs> and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. <clears throat> until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years, 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, the king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, <coughs> even when we are dead, more dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and sealed us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. According to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. These words of St. John's Gospel, the words of our own patron here of our parish of St. John the Evangelist, are words that perhaps ring familiar to many of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. These words that we see perhaps as a motto amongst the Christian faithful, words that are sometimes put on different um, articles of of, of common life, words that remind us of who we are. Sometimes it's just the verse, the chapter and verse, John 3.16. See it even sometimes marked on the faces of football players or some sort of tattoo on an ankle or something. 
John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might, might have eternal life. And so as we hear these words, let us receive them, yes, as the Christian people. Let us receive them as men and women redeemed in Christ. But all the more so, let us receive them as you and I in need of mercy. Let's not just think that God loves the world. Let's remember that God loves you. God loves me. And so perhaps we can take this very, as it were, motto of Christian life and make it our own, not as something for others to believe, but for something to reflect what I believe. God so loved me that he gave his only son so that I'm, I might not perish, but that I might have eternal life. And as we receive these words as our own, perhaps it will change our very disposition towards God our Father in heaven. It will change our action in this, our life, and maybe just today. God so loves me that he gave his only son. We find ourselves at this midway point of the season of Lent, and we are, as it were, enlightened a little bit. We have cause for joy. Yes, we have considered for these past few weeks, through our actions of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, how attached we are to the things of darkness. And I pray that you have engaged fully and well in this season of repentance and penance, that you've taken advantage of hours of prayer or even just a few moments at the end of a long day, that you've taken advantage of the sacrament of confession, that you've come to pray even in the silence of a still church, and even if we perhaps haven't yet taken up that opportunity, we know that we still have time. For the Lord is merciful, rich in mercy. God so loved the world, God so loved me, that he sent his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not, have, might not perish. And so God loves me. But it's easy for me to be lost according to the ways of infidelity. As we heard in our first reading today, in those days all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple. And the wrath of the Lord rose up because they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets. The anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed. And if we hear that just as, as though God were full of wrath and justice, we would lose the sense of the mercy in his justice. So easily we love the things of the world, we love the things of darkness, that we're afraid of the light. We'd rather remain in the dark, hidden away, consumed by ourselves. But as we come to recognize that the Lord, as he allows us to suffer, rather takes that suffering upon himself. As the Lord allows us to recognize how dark we can become, then can we start to see, perhaps, his light. Because as we come closer and closer to that week that we call Holy, Holy Week, and that Friday that is good, Good Friday, Christ dies on the cross. He suffers along the way. He endures our sins. 
And yet, in that darkest of moments, as the earth shakes and all seems lost, that veil between life on earth and life in heaven is torn. And after three days, the Lord is raised. And that brilliant light of his splendor is unrecognizable still to us. We don't recognize him as he is until our eyes are, as it were, unscaled. As we are stripped of those things that keep us in the dark. God so loves me that he sent his only son that I might not perish but I might have eternal life. And so, dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this moment along the way of Lent, let us keep our eyes focused. Yes, there's much darkness all around us. Yes, there's still my sin that grips me and my weakness that causes me fo to fall far too often. But the light of his grace is just upon the horizon. The light of eternal life is already within my grasp. So let us turn towards the Lord and let us live in his life. Let us allow those things of darkness to subside and allow that dawn of his grace to become ever brighter. Strip away whatever keeps that light from becoming bright in your life. Because we do not forget that the Lord so loves you and me. Amen. In the confidence of this hope and with full trust in those words that the Lord has revealed to us in prophets and commandments and in his very Son, we proudly proclaim and profess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that God longs for us to live in the light of his love, we offer these prayers. For the church, all men and women redeemed in Christ, that they may bear forth the light of his grace and call all peoples to repentance and faith in him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish and all the people of Agawam, that we may look to Christ crucified and see the true and merciful love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the times we have violated or neglected the sanctity of human life, that we may have the strength and humility of repentance, the eagerness to seek God's mercy, and the power of his grace in our softened hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young men and women, teenagers and high school students, that they may be well formed in virtue and right reason. We also pray for all from our parish who are invited to join Bishop Byrne at the local Youth Day next Saturday with prayer, fun discussion, and lunch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a generous response to our annual Catholic appeal so that our generosity may serve and assist those in great need throughout our diocese here in Western Massachusetts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our in the beginning preschool ministry, that many children and families may know we are the hand, handiwork of God, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that he has prepared in advance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers written in our book of remembrance and on our prayer line, those we have been asked to pray for, especially the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, as well as those we lift up from the depths of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, that they may be resplendent in the light of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, you, you so loved the world that you gave us the gift of your only Son, that we might have eternal life with you. Hear and answer our prayers in, in the way that brings us to the fullness of that life, through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us go from this place to the places of our daily life. Let us go renewed in spirit and enlightened by God's grace. And let us take with us perhaps just that realization of how near the Lord is to us, how beautiful it is that we are united in prayer and worship of Almighty God. You know, Mass is a wonderful experience. There's a lot of commotion. There's excitement. There's children crying or laughing or so many wonderful things. And then there are those moments of silence where you know that we are all united in prayer. That instead of, as it were, voicing ourselves with our lips, we're voicing ourselves with the very radiance of our hearts. And think about that mystery of heaven. Here in this world, in this realm, we can only communicate by making use of our bodies, by passing air over some part of our vocal cords or the like. But when we communicate heart to heart as we learn how to pray, then do we start to see a little bit more clearly how bright life in God is. So remain in that light of His. Be encouraged, be strengthened, and pray with and for one another, knowing you're not alone. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.